Back around 1990, I believe, and he's always had things that make everybody think, and he's going to do the same thing today. He builds power transformers. He spoke first about 93 or 94 at, uh, I think it was an extraordinary science conference in 93. At that time, we were doing, in odd-numbered years, conferences that focused on technical building information, and then in the even-numbered years, we'd go more into theory. So Don's always been very practical. He's always built stuff that's real that you can get your hands on, and from that, we prove and disprove all kinds of theories. He's promised us there will be a lot of sparks flying, and his basic thrust is explaining why the term ambient energy is better than zero-point energy, and the ambient background is a better term than ether. And so uh, he's got a university degree in petroleum engineering and geology from the early 50s. He was first employed at Gulf Oil, later Phillips, and many, many others, including some independent companies. But he says oil is not a necessity anymore with the system that he's building. So here's Don Smith. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to see you. And uh, we're going to uh, hop along the bunny trail here and uh, see some uh, things. Uh, we can start with number one. Okay. The following video is a presentation from Resident Energy Systems. This material contained in this video is confidential and for the uh, intended recipient's eyes only. Uh, viewing by the personnel or persons uh, is unlawful. If, this, if you are not the intended recipient of this, uh, please turn this presentation off now. What we're looking at is the development of resonant energy systems for using the Casimir effect to uh, uh, produce uh, more electricity uh, out than we actually require in. Um, briefly stated, what we're looking at here is uh, uh, this is a, uh, the scope output of the uh, readings taken in various places in the system. The top or amber is the uh, output sine wave as coming out through the regulated transformer inverted AC, uh, 120 volts. The, um, the next group of sine wave is the uh, intermediate inverter sine wave. Um, the uh, the, uh, the uh, violet uh, trace or magenta trace is the uh, uh, DC voltage um, of the, at the input and back to the battery. And uh, the bottom sine wave is the uh, uh, resonant backfeed uh, energy sine wave. Um, currently for this uh, test, we're using a uh, Tektronics model uh, TDS uh, uh, 3034 uh, Bravo. Uh, see if I can get this. Uh, for uh, fine measurements so that um, there's no question about the integrity of the measurements uh, of our equipment. Um, this scope is commonly available in the U.S. Uh, it may not be available abroad. Also uh, currently being used are Fluke uh, uh, commonly available uh, Model 177 and Model 189 uh, meters. The meter on the left Reading uh, 15, uh, 115 volts is currently uh, coming from the output uh, from the output transformer. The uh, uh, model 189 on the right is measuring uh, current battery voltage and return voltage uh, to the battery from the system. Um, this transformer that you're in front of the screen uh, currently has the capacity to. Uh, uh, produce 120, 240, and 480 off the different taps. Um, this particular meter here uh, is, uh, is the load and the, uh, uh, the voltage control for the transformer in the foreground is the variac uh, the seen in the back in the uh, foreground of your picture presently. The, um, the whole unit is completely encased in this cabinet presently. Um, Using uh, a special uh, capacitance inversion circuit, we're utilizing what's called the Casimir effect um, to uh, produce uh, 
uh, AC 120 and uh, DC 12, um, AC 140 and AC 480 uh, as needed. Um, for uh, commercial, industrial, or residential use. Um, briefly, um, uh, presently, just a brief walk around the cabin. This is a 12-volt DC load. Uh, the uh, the two uh, uh, 1 million candle watt power lights uh, in the foreground, we're going to switch those on. Those are 1 million candle watt power lights. Um, uh, here we see the back side of the transformer, um, the uh, uh, 122 transformer and the variac for controlling it. Um, the, uh, uh, these lamps are uh, for aviation uh, uh, landing lights. Uh, they're 1 million candlewatt power each. The, uh, um, the the load that is on placed on them, we are going to also convert the uh, transfer the load from the uh, lighting that we are using for um, our output here to the lighting for uh, we're loading the system. This is a small system, but uh, we uh, right now the uh, the landing lights are putting on about a 60 amp DC load or. 60 kilowatts. Uh, it's, it's about a 65 amp DC load per lamp. Per lamp. Um, we have a uh, a 500 watt uh, lamp to my uh, to my left here uh, that we're currently using. The uh, sine wave is remaining stable on the uh, uh, on the scope meter. We have stable voltage uh, without variation and stable sine wave. Um, to be able to represent and capture all of the uh, uh, data, we've compressed four separate channels into one screen. Um, that's uh, hence the reason why we're dealing with uh, uh, very compressed uh, data there. Uh, we've uh, um, we're using we're compressing quite a bit into a small space. Um, this is a um, uh, 20 amp. Uh, AC space heater um, the, um, um, that we're currently uh, loading with. Um, the, um, uh, the voltage is currently uh, uh, remaining sta fairly stable at 114, 115 and uh, there's our DC voltage uh, on return. We're pulling uh, 65 amps aside from those, uh, uh, from those lights uh, out the top. Uh, once again, um, this system can be closed. Um, this is a brief review and presentation of uh, Resident Energy Systems uh, uh, energy generation product. Thank you. Okay, uh, check. Okay, we're going to uh, look at some slides of some devices that I have uh, uh, done, and uh, I'll talk in detail about those things as they come along. We have about 70 slides uh, of devices which I have, which are working uh, the way they're supposed to and doing exactly what you would hope they would do. Okay. The slides are ready to go. Yeah, just still uh, the uh, theoretically the, we're experiencing a little bit of technical. Okay, can we look at those in uh, uh, better detail, maybe? Uh, they're not real. Uh, are they clear enough that you can make them out? Yeah. Okay, is that better? Uh, th those slides are real bright and real uh, life. They're r real bright and 
show great detail. Okay, we have a pancake uh, device on the top there. Uh, this one, small pancake uh, device, and it was one of uh, about four dozen different uh, devices that I've, I've done. Uh, with the pancake device, uh, you get an amplification of the uh, energy such that uh, you actually physically can generate through inductance and other uh, other things that uh, there's an energy gain, and the energy gain is coming from the ambient background energy. It's not getting something for nothing, and uh, we'll go into that in more detail later. Go ahead down below there. Okay, uh, when I first started doing these things, uh, uh, I had uh, one of uh, Nikola Tesla's books uh, by Thomas Comfort Martin, and it's the official authorized biography of Tesla. And uh, from that, uh, there are a number of experiments which he uh, shows in the book. So I went through every one of those experiments and uh, uh, in great detail, and that was my learning process for understanding uh, what Tesla had done. And uh, at the end of it, uh, I realized that uh, technology had uh, advanced quite a bit, and a lot of new uh, things which were available which were not available at the time Tesla did his work. So all the things I've done are extensions off of Tesla, and uh, they're beyond, uh, in many cases, beyond where Tesla had arrived at when he had fin completed his work. Okay? Okay, I like to... Uh, play with uh, plasma tubes and that sort of thing. Uh, this is one of my early experiments where I uh, took the uh, ambient background energy using uh, the uh, test instruments that are used for plasma, and uh, it worked beautifully. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is something which I brought to the 19, uh, seven, 1989 uh, Tesla uh, uh, convention, and it uh, was my black box that I brought, and it caused quite an upset and quite an uproar. But basically, it's a very simple device, and... Uh, it was working uh, completely off of the ambient background energy, and it could have basically ran forever if uh, anyone wanted to look into it. Okay. Okay, this is one of the other devices. Uh, this one uh, generated about uh, 35 kilowatts. And uh, that seems impossible with a small device like that, but it actually did. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, next, please. Uh, we're seeing some of the other views of that particular device up close, so we'll skip along until we get through that. Next, please. Okay, uh, th that is actually uh, turned up uh, from where you're looking is probably okay, but uh, what we see here, uh, if you can read the things, this is a, a 35 kilowatt system. Okay, this is uh, where I put uh, put a Tesla coil onto a uh, uh, onto the toroid there, 
and uh, use the Tesla coil to generate uh, additional energy which was not present there originally because again all this stuff that comes from the outside or the ambient background uh, is added into what you have so it appears to be that you're getting energy from nowhere which is not uh, correct at all uh, you do not get energy from nowhere. It's, the, it has to all come from somewhere. That is also a device I made especially for the Brazilian government and a project that I was doing for them. Uh, I was supposed to uh, renew and re remodel their whole p power system for them. And uh, they agreed, we had the written agreement and uh, Everything was uh, boxed up, but the problem was that every time they came up with the money to do the project, uh, the value of the Brazilian money had decreased to where it was basically worthless. So the net result, after about 10 years of fooling with the project, it never got done. But uh, the, we're still very good friends, and. Uh, Maybe someday we'll do it. They wanted to pay me with their money, and uh, I couldn't. I had to pay for all the uh, uh, things that are necessary to make it happen with my money. But they were going to pay me with their mo money, and I couldn't very well uh, do that. I didn't have quite enough funds to uh, supplement the government of Brazil. Okay, we've gone to another device here. Uh, this is one which is currently being manufactured in Russia successfully in large quantity. And uh, it's one of the devices that appear to get uh, quite a bit of attention. Uh, there's eight different, uh, eight different power sources there, and they're not intermingled. Uh, so each one of those power sources uh, will do about uh, 50 watts, about 50 watts, uh, I mean 50 kilowatts. Okay, we can go ahead. Okay, this is uh, something which I uh, have a patent on. Uh, which relates to getting a, a huge amount of energy out when you put a few uh, milliamps of energy in, and you end up with like uh, uh, 100 kilowatts of energy out. And uh, that won't make sense to anyone who uh, thinks like uh, an electrical system. You have to think in... Uh, terms of, uh, of uh, you have to think in terms of, uh, of the uh, magnetic flux uh, because if you're using electrical flux everything uh, is dying a heat death and you lose the energy almost immediately in electrical flux but in magnetic flux you can make as many copies of the original as you want without uh, depleting the original at all. So if you're chasing uh, electrical flux, you're chasing the wrong rabbit. Uh, you need to be chasing the magnetic resonance flux. Okay. Uh, this is a early stage of the eight uh, cylinder thing you saw just a moment ago uh, where it was demonstrated as to how simple it was and how well it worked and uh, this particular thing has been duplicated all over the world in uh, many countries successfully there have been people here who have tried to duplicate it and have done so successfully but there are quite a few people who apparently had frustrations with this, and uh, we need to talk about that on a one to one basis. Okay. Okay.
okay. Well, actually, you're beginning, if you can focus that thing in where everyone can read it properly, uh, you're looking at... at uh, oh, you... Uh, did you want to explain it, or do you want to just let them read it? Well, uh, I, let, uh, let you explain it. You're familiar with it. Okay. Just uh, take it a little bit at a time and where everybody can see what's going on. This is actually part of patent uh, document, so uh, you're seeing the thing firsthand before it was ever in the final form. Okay, this, is, this invention relates to the dipole antenna system and their electromagnetic radiation. When used with a transformer, an appropriate uh, energy collection system becomes a transformer generator. The invention collects and converts uh, ambient energy, which uh, with conventional devices is radiated and wasted. Um, this is more of the, uh, the like the Moray flux valve or the Moray valve or the Tesla valve. Um, it's in concert with that similar technology in that what it does is uh, uh, when tuned to the proper frequency you can pick up uh, the strong ambient uh, resonant energy that's uh, available in your area and the frequencies vary from place to place. A system that's assembled at your house may not work 10 miles away as well. Um, what you have to do is tune it to match uh, the work in your area. There's a gentleman in New York that has a system that Four blocks away, uh, when he moved from one house to another, uh, almost was unfunctional until he retuned it. But basically, it's picking, uh, picking up ambient resonant energy, and some individuals would tend to call that, uh, well, I'm depleting the uh, ambient RF that's produced by my radio station, uh, and uh, I'm sucking a black hole of the RF in, uh, which you can do. Um, in fact, uh, we've run tests where um, we've set up uh, everything from a regular uh, monopole to a dipole to a ground plane and Yagi and uh, with uh, signal strength meters located just a thousand yards away uh, we've figured out uh, how to suck down a specific frequency so that we can convert it to usable uh, e electromotive force uh, uh, to charge batteries and run things and we've watched the signal strength deplete just a thousand yards away but Tesla ran his 1931 Pierce Arrow there were very few, if any, radio uh, commercial radio stations in some of the areas where he drove that, and it drove just fine, uh, in, which proves that there's still plenty of magnetic resonant energy out there to be had. Uh, the dipole uh, basically uh, uses that. Um, sometimes you need to excite. I'm going to pass through some of the, uh, because I'm explaining it. Uh, sometimes you um, um, need to excite the uh, ambient magnetic field, you can excite it or disturb it like water in the pond and as the ripples pass through a, uh, say a wave generator you can, uh, uh, if you have a small wave generator there as it you know, just a float on the surface of a pond uh, with a uh, magnet in it, you know, floating up and down over a coil, you can generate electricity just from some child jumping into the water. And all you need is a rectifier transformer circuit for each one of those uh, that uh, are in the water. You can do, disturb the magnetic field in different ways. If you can disturb the magnetic field in such a way that you're using little or no current or reduced wattage to do so, while disturbing the magnetic field, any time you disturb it, you create a flux or a uh, dis disturbance in the flux field. And when you disturb the flux field, uh, 10,000 lines of flux over a conductor constitutes one volt amp or one watt. You have usable electromotive force. Um, the dipole turns out to be one of the uh, more efficient methods uh, that Don's uh, invented and worked with. Actually, he's invented applications that use a dipole that some of them he's not even uh, shared with more than two or three people. Um, some, sometimes uh, I've visited him and he's been thinking and explained uh, inventions that haven't even been uh, put to paper yet. But uh, what you'll see here is, is that um, the dipole um, creates a disturbance we, with a coil on the bottom we create a disturbance in the magnetic field and the plates uh, were uh, are our inductors so that we take through the transformer rectifiers uh, that uh, 
uh, turn, that make it usable. Uh, the dipole generator here, uh, you can see the plates. Uh, uh, the top plate uh, is a, an inductor. The bottom plate is an inductor. The uh, middle plate is an insulator. Uh, and uh, there's your dipole circuit with your exciter coil. Um, much like the eight uh, coil uh, device that w uh, he was explaining earlier, uh, the disc in the middle, all it has is just voids with a e material like uh, bismuth, neodymium, or um, there's actually a, a f another material that even works better that are sprayed on something as simple as a plexiglass disc or a um, uh, phonograph record. And in one of those, he actually one of, is one of the prototypes that he still has that's working. There's still a, a phonograph record in it. Um, this is an assim assimilation of the uh, plasma with the... Uh, uh, tube that all it's doing is disturbing the magnetic resonant field and you have uh, your inductor coils that or inductor plates in this case that also are ha qualify as a capacitor plate capacitor uh, to 17 where your terminal block where you go to your transformer rectifier um, there um, uh, there's many different applications the one that is now on your screen let me see if I can uh, I'm, I'm going to shrink that down a little bit here um, uh, we're going to reduce that so you can see it. At, uh, um, this one, uh, 21 and 20 there, is a series of plates that are assembled. Uh, you'll see in a moment that uh, on Don, Don Smith is a website that uh, he has a, a product gallery that he numbers many of them, uh, 1 through 9. And uh, let's see, now this, one isn't, this one isn't on the website, I don't think, Don. But uh, www.altenergy-pro.com, in a little bit we'll put it up. Um, but this one right here uh, is similar to the plasma tube, but there's uh, number one is a dipole with north facing uh, up. And uh, the, um, I told myself I wasn't going to do this. I was thinking about getting out that funny green laser, uh, but Don has a laser pointer there. Um, well, here, I'll just use the pointer on the, on the mouse here. Okay, that, that's the North Pole. Down here is the South Pole. Um, there's an exciter coil that all we're doing with this, exci this coil is using that dipole magnet. Uh, we're creating a disturbance. We're not uh, producing a uh, generation of electromotive force by sheer mechanical effort in and magnets passing over uh, induction coils. Um, this, this is a different approach. It's, it's, it's creating a resonance that's allowing, in this particular case, uh, 20 and 21 constitute a group of uh, 11 plates uh, with uh, uh, 20 insulators plates between them. Uh, it's a, um, see, Don, feel free to jump in whenever. Should we just, should we just keep going? Don. Yes. Yeah. Um, what was the question, please? Okay. Um, uh, okay. You. This. This is. Uh, you, okay. You okay. want to. Okay. That's just a general statement of uh, uh, what the uh, was all about. And uh, other than that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. What you've just seen there is something which uh, European patent has already been issued on. And I had tried uh, for years and years to uh, work with the United States Patent Office and the Department of Energy and the various other people uh, connected to the U.S. government. and. Uh, uh, they never could prove what I was trying to do was wrong. They just simply sandbagged me and uh, caused me to spend uh, several million dollars of my own money uh, trying to work with them and uh, running my biological clock out, among other things. So uh, uh, I decided I had enough of that. And uh, uh, so I went to the European Patent Office and uh, actually have a very good uh, uh, relationship with the uh, uh, 
uh, Russian Academy of Sciences and uh, a number of other people in China and other places. So I have no difficulty getting a patent through the European Patent Office these days. So uh, I have uh, completely given up on the United States government because of the dishonesty and their methods of uh, handling uh, situations which they don't understand. Okay, where are we now? Uh, okay, this device is one which if you don't have any uh, good working knowledge of resonant energy that you would want to purchase, it costs about 50 bucks. And it's supplied uh, through the, one of the uh, services. You can get it through uh, several science uh, services. But basically what it amounts to is that you have a transmitter and a receiver. And of the transmitter and receiver, you can have, uh, like in the radio station or television station, uh, you can have uh, hundreds of thousands of people tuning in, uh, or thousands of people tuning in, and it doesn't deplete the system at all. So in magnetic resonance energy, the output and the uh, receptor things is a multiplying method which works very well. And almost all of the, my devices uh, depend on that system in order to get the extra energy which apparently was not there originally. Okay, uh, this is a pitch for uh, uh, my re resonant energy systems. And I don't know whether you can see it well enough to make it oh. out or not. Can you? Uh, it's, it was too hard to read. I, I'm just scrolling through it. Now, okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Are we ready to go to the uh, ultimate uh, presentation here? Where are we in time-wise? Yeah, okay. Um, that was that was a letter from uh, Don uh, recommending a uh, recommendation for a submarine power system. Uh, it uses a very unique material called Turfanol D, which also happens to be the uh, uh, it's extremely expensive, but the most optimum material that that one device that you looked at earlier that uh, had the eight coils on it, um, it's uh, probably as, as, as good a diam diamagnetic to, uh, as you can uh, obtain. Um, yeah. In, uh, is, in yeah. this, uh, let's see here, um, in, in the picture before you, there's a... Um, um, there's an example that uh, the one device that he talked about earlier that, uh, um, well, I can't get a good, pic good uh, display of it. Uh, I was trying to, but the disc in the middle, if you use Turfanol D uh, and just uh, uh, make a uh, uh, slots in the disc so that it interrupts uh, the field between the magnetic coils, um, you uh, deflate and inflate the magnetic field between them and uh, the, co the field inflating and deflating constitutes a, or a, a magnetic field flux field passing over the conductors and produces the electromotive force. In this case here, um, the, uh, the rod that you're looking at is made, made of Turfanol D, uh, which is extremely expensive. Uh, it, uh, you can use the inductors in the ambient magnetic uh, flux field that uh, uh, is not stagnant or, st or stable on its own, uh, induces a voltage or an, and a current uh, in these coils and uh, therefore uh, provides usable electromotive force.
of this thing you're looking at here is an offshoot from the uh, uh, military uh, use of uh, sonic uh, methods to uh, uh, for submarines. Uh, in the, that case, the energy goes out about 50 miles and can come back about 50 miles, and uh, you can read uh, what's going on with the instruments. Uh, in this particular case, we're uh, uh, using a rod, uh, Turfinol D, which uh, uh, is similar to what the uh, uh, military use would have been. And the Turfinol D is very highly, it's a titanium zirconate, in case you want to know exactly what it is. And uh, it has very unusual uh, electrical characteristics which you can use to your advantage in uh, building these devices like I like to build. It's also a little bit expensive. Uh, uh, when I originally started on this, uh, those rods you're looking at there were about uh, $3,000 each. So. Uh, uh, there's other uh, types of material that you can use that will react somewhat similarly, and uh, it, uh, certain types of uh, stainless steel will uh, have some of those same characteristics. So you you can uh, pick and choose and uh, get something which does not cost so much, maybe. Okay, uh, we apologize for this one being on its side. But this is actually the schematic that was inside the black box. And uh, if you look uh, up at the top right-hand corner at number one, that's the lead that came out of it that was actually the ground lead. Um, much like uh, the crystal radio set or the Tesla valve or the Moray valve, uh, you had to have a ground lead. Um, and in this case, uh, it's not quite the same as the Moray valve or development. But uh, what happened is... is uh, it produces uh, electricity the same way. It gets there by a different route. Um, two of the devices that we saw earlier, that we saw the uh, uh, wire induction coils, um, are basic forerunners of, or similar to this system. But uh, the, um, the suitcase ran and ran and ran, and, and the suitcase is still somewhere today. I, 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 have, I don't have permission to tell you where it's at, but it is somewhere today. <laughs> Did you did you want to do you have any comment on that one, Don? Well, there's uh, several different devices represented here. Here's the alternator part of it here, and uh, of course this is your uh, uh, bridge uh, system here, uh, and uh, they have this is the input uh, part back here. In, this is your basically your L1 coil right here. Uh, this would be your electrical s system of input into the L1. And uh, this is a timing device, uh, just a timing so that you're getting the uh, uh, frequency that you want on your L1. Okay, this is basically the L2 system here and it's split up in two different parts. Uh, uh, for reasons of uh, 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 getting uh, a better signal into the deal. And this, of course, we mentioned was a diode bridge where you're taking the alternating current system here and changing it to DC so that you can reform the uh, waveform here and through the... Uh, through the uh, electrical system here and of course this is the output transformer here and when you end up with this thing you end up with a, a waveform that you can use in any system that's out there including your computer or whatever else go ahead I'm going to go ahead and pass through the uh, uh, most of the uh, text for you, Don. You can just explain it. Okay. 
Okay, uh, what we're seeing here is the uh, right angle component of the different uh, uh, factors involved in an electrical system. Uh, the magnetic effect and gravitational seem to be related in some respect. The uh, electrical thing uh, is uh, on its own. Okay. Okay, this is explaining the uh, separation of the block wall in regards to the electrical component and the magnetic component. Uh, if you're going to go the electrical route, you're, you lose the battle before you get there. Uh, if you go the magnetic resonance route, you, uh, the world is your oyster. This is explaining uh, how the different parts of the electrical uh, of the, of the uh, Tesla coil is separated so that uh, different parts of it perform different functions. The ideal Tesla coil is one that eliminates the uh, magnetic part and dwells on the electrical end of the system. But that's a mistake. Uh, if you really want to get, biz get in business, you have to go to the uh, resonant, resonant, uh, resonant uh, magnetic flux. Sorry. Go ahead. This is explaining how the amplification factor, which uh, uh, actually, in fact, is the Fibonacci series, showing how uh, how things uh, increase with resonant energy. Uh, you have this uh, same resonant energy showing up in the growth habits of uh, of uh, seashells and all sorts of things. It, the energy is amplifying as the system multiplies and the output is much greater than the original input. Okay. Uh, these are simply some uh, mathematical notations in regards to the various things you run into in the electrical system and magnetic. Okay, that is sort of self-explanatory, I do believe. Uh, what you're seeing here is uh, part of a book that I did. Uh, uh, the book is on a CD-ROM, and uh, uh, I used to sell copies of it, and I sold over... 40,000 copies of it worldwide and uh, here in the United States not too many uh, bought it but uh, overseas there was quite a following and so with that in mind I decided if I was going to be successful I should be chasing my rabbits where I was most likely to be successful and that's why I moved out of the United States and started doing uh, things overseas. Okay, this is uh, showing uh, how uh, energy is transferred from one uh, media to another and how the uh, electrons uh, are reacting to that. Okay, these are some uh, early experiments I did, uh, which uh, show how simple this sort of device can be. There's several different versions of it. Okay, this is uh, showing the. Uh, uh, 
the electrical and magnetic uh, interplay and uh, how you go about achieving uh, certain frequencies uh, that you might be interested in uh, incorporating into your device. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, that address I might tell you is no longer applicable. Uh, uh, we, uh, after about uh, 30 years in the air, uh, that at that address, uh, we recently moved to North Dallas area. So uh, we're uh, not at Houston anymore. Okay. Uh, some of these statements here are simply uh, self-explanatory, I think. Don does have all of this available in a book, or you can uh, purchase um, a PDF of this by uh, just emailing him at his uh, alt dot, altenergy.pro, and uh, for a small fee, he'll, he'll uh, email you a copy of this PDF. Okay, these are some uh, uh, various devices uh, that have lots of amperage. Uh, you run into the problem where you, uh, people think you have uh, 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 lots of volts uh, but no amps, that sort of thing. That's not necessarily true at all. If you know the right way to construct your Tesla coils, they'll have an amperage equal to, if not greater, than the uh, voltage. This is case in point. And this is uh, showing uh, how the uh, systems break down. And uh, the power, power in, uh, out, of the, out of the plant here might be like uh, uh, 5,000 or 50,000 uh, volts, and as it comes along, uh, get into where it starts uh, coming down the system, and you start uh, transformers reducing the power. And when you finally get down to your house, it's uh, maybe a couple of thousand volts uh, in this general area. Can't see. Uh... And this is all using a electrical resonance system. Anytime you have an alternating current, you have a resonance system. And uh, if you use a magnetic flux component of it, uh, you've got uh, the full force and effect of it. You can multiply it and do things with it that you cannot do with electrical flux. You're wasting your time if you're going the electrical flux route. It's not going to take you anywhere except uh, to heat death, which uh, is a normal system which you are taught in physics in the university. They don't bother to teach you about the uh, resonant magnetic flux for obvious reasons. Okay, I, I think that's about everything in, in the, the PDF there. Um, this this was a, just a quick uh, note off of the website. This is uh, one of the um, uh, devices that's, um, there's a neodymium magnet, there, uh, one each in each of the uh, PVC cores there uh, that uh, have a counterpart on the opposite side. The rotating disc inside this particular one happens to be a phonograph record uh, with holes drilled in it uh, so that the field is uh, disrupted, uh, much like the drawing earlier. And the, the uh, small motor uh, turns on uh, 28 milliwatts at 12 volts um, and uh, just rotates the phonograph record so that it creates a disruptor or interrupter um, 
terphenol D is the most advantageous material, although bismuth or powdered uh, neodymium will work and uh, spray adhesive on an old phonograph record and sprinkle it with the uh, uh, even the uh, neodymium dust uh, uh, is enough to disrupt it and uh, if you have the holes equally spaced there's little or no load on the phonograph record while it rotates disrupting the field. Um, this is uh, Don's website here. This is uh, one of the showcases that you can look at it, a lot of the material. Uh, at least you can see what's on his website and here's the uh, the front page uh, and uh, there's a contact down uh, you can see the contact point right here if you want to that's the best way to email him remember Don uh, like us some some of us get more than one or two emails a day Don's average is about 300 um, I average about 1100 myself um, make sure that you know when you email him that you put some large block letters you know like Tesla Tech or, or something so that he uh, knows that it, your email is not one of the half of, you know, 250 spam mail out of the, you know, with, you know that uh, come with his regular 300, okay? Um, Don, now I think it's, uh, how about uh, your demonstration? Okay, we're going on into an actual demonstration here of, uh, some of the things that uh, relate to what you're interested in. And I'm going to also need to, someone to come and help me with the... Uh, uh. Okay, I, I just had to get a microphone on so I could come over and give you a hand. Uh, hold on here, i got to make sure mine's set the right height. Okay. okay, let me tell you what these devices are here. This is a Tesla coil with a, a, an output on it. This is a dielectric testing machine uh, that we see here. And uh, what we're basically going to do is in uh, electronic yeah, gadgets yeah. like uh, right capacitors here. and uh, resistors and all this and that, they have their own characteristics. And, this particular case here, a capacitor is a blocking device. So I don't know whether you're fully aware of that or not, but uh, when something goes into one side of a capacitor, it does not pass through that capacitor at all. Uh, what does pass through there is your, uh, uh, the reflection of it, which is from the ambient energy background uh, caused by the Kashmir and Van der Waals forces. So what I'm going to do is uh, put 8,000 volts on this plate here and let the fellow with the earth ground over there play with the other side. So uh, with that uh, in mind, let's see if I can turn it on here. Okay, we're, I think they're on there right now. Okay, we're, we've got 8,000 volts here, and uh, you should be seeing sparking up there, very noticeable. Right toward the middle. And, uh, okay, when this is sparking, what's happening on the other side? Move it away from it as much as you can. Yeah, just hold it close enough to keep going all the time. And none of the energy from the side that I'm on is passing through the other side. The other side is reflecting the ambient background energy, uh, which uh, some people call zero point energy or whatever. But uh, you can see that 8,000 volts is uh, putting up quite a fuss on the other side. And we have a sheet of plastic between the, uh, the two plates here so that uh, none of the energy from the side that I'm on can go through the other side. And uh, if you don't believe in uh, ambient background energy, which uh, some people call zero point energy, but I consider that an albatross. Uh, uh, ambient uh, background energy is a much better term. Many of you are familiar with the fact that uh, AC sine wave passes through capacitance plates like this 
But what about a DC? Uh, DC voltage doesn't pass through uh, the capacitor. Uh, in this case, what you're looking at, uh, if there was, if we were using pulse DC, you can excite a field on the opposite side with very little, um, and just like Tesla did, put a load on the cathode, on the opposite side. Uh, and this it doesn't make a difference which way the anode or cathode is. Um, on, a, on this particular, you can set it up so that uh, if you're putting a pulse DC signal into it, uh, you can uh, extract a pulse DC signal out and put a load between the ground and uh, your uh, anode or cathode, whichever you've chosen to use. Now, if you buy the regular like uh, Mallory or one of the other uh, DC capacitors, those are very anode cathode specific. You have to be careful which one you use. Uh, but right now, the, using the Casimir effect, that's basically how all capacitors work. Is uh, Casimir? He did some excellent work in defining. It wasn't that he was the first one, but he did some excellent work on defining what it is, and they call it the Casimir effect. Now, um, this is not a closed circuit to ground. The power source to run the exciter is actually coming to, from the little light-off pack in the back there. Uh, we are using earth ground through the uh, grid house system here uh, because they, uh, at one building over, have a you know one-inch diameter, eight-foot, <laughs> nice copper ground stake driven in. Uh, but uh, uh, so that there's no way you can see that as developing a closed loop system. Um, on DC, you can actually put a load. Uh, you can dike this white wire and put in a load. Uh, we've had a situation where we've had a 180 volt DC motor, three horsepower, uh, with 26 milliamps exciting, uh, spinning, no load, but it did spin at full 3450 RPM. Okay, and the commercial version of this uh, is already being used to power electric airplanes and uh, scooters and all sorts of things. Uh, okay, we're going to open up for questions uh, at this time, okay? Is that strictly hooked up to the battery? Um, the power source to run it is coming from the battery, yes, the light-up pack. So it's not coming from grid. There's no closed loop there. And it was, that was done specifically to ensure and demonstrate that there was no closed loop. Okay, first question. Yes. Oh, is that mic on or? Let me double check it. Uh, let me make sure that. Okay, try it again. Hello? Yeah, okay. Yeah, do you use Casimir cavities or maybe 50 nanometers wide to, to extract energy from the ambient energy that you speak of? Well, the uh, Kashmir and Van der Waals forces are very much apparent in this particular type of device. Uh, uh, very little is known about them. Uh, there have been uh, relatively few publications, and most of the people who published uh, uh, add to the confusion rather than uh, uh, help. But uh, it's very much in evident and uh, evidence, and uh, we can uh, we have uh, uh, commercial versions of uh, uh, devices which run on this system, and uh, they're very obviously there, and uh, they'll be there a long time. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Patrick Bailey. Yeah. Um I think it's wonderful that you've gotten patents in other countries, and I really like the fact that you're marketing to Saudi Arabia because they want things to replace oil. So my question is really to John, who has seen your stuff for years and I guess has really helped you out a lot, and John knows the proper way to measure fancy devices like this. So well, John, is this really working? Uh, <laughs> uh, John Fiola and I are relatively new, new acquaintances. Uh -huh. uh, as of about six months or maybe a no. year ago, we didn't know each other. Actually, Don and I have just gotten to know each other. Uh, we first met only 19 months ago. It's, it'll, in fact, it'll be 20 months ago um, in another week. Um, we've that, and uh, we re we've kind of only gotten to know each other well over about the last year. It turns out that a lot of the research we've done is identical and uh, so we kind of fell in together. Yeah, well, I'm, 
I'm not interested about your relationship. I'm interested, does this work? Uh, it very definitely does, and it's been proven by the Russians and uh, the Russian Academy of Sciences and uh, a number of other people that I'm connected with have uh, actually, we've proved uh, beyond, uh, we actually have commercial devices running. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, there's a, uh, was an order placed by the Chinese government for 24 uh, twin engine uh, electrical aircraft that run on this system, and it does not require uh, fuel cells or anything else. It, once it's started, it can run on its own. And uh, the aircraft that I'm talking about, uh, the first 24 were delivered, and uh, there's four, uh, 48 more in progress right now. The twin engines like the ones that are at Newark Airport in New York or uh, areas where you see the uh, uh, commuter aircraft. Don, would you like to show off uh, a few pictures from one well, of your... Uh, one thing you have to take in mind here is that the contractor on this uh, system we we're talking about was none other than General Electric right here in the United States. So <laughs> if you're trying to find an evil side to it, uh, the United States government and General Electric are the biggest culprit. Yeah. Um, okay, the next, uh, we've got about three or four more uh, minutes to take questions. Uh, who's got the mic? Okay, let me turn it on for you. Okay, mic coming hot. There we go. Okay, John, uh, on the demonstration, I'm over here. If you had the second side plate twice as big as the first one, would you get twice as much reflected ambient energy into uh, your secondary actually, circuit? Uh, in this type of system, as you noted earlier, uh, I showed you a demonstration where there was a multiple, uh, one transmitter with multiple receivers. Well, uh, you can do this with resonant energy and you can have uh, as many receivers as you want and they all have the same output as the original had uh, in addition to the original. And you won't deplete the original in any, any sense. Okay, the second part is... Let me shut me up. Uh, could one of these be purchased to power my home? And uh, these be purchased by someone today? Right. Uh, Here in the United States. Uh, the financial control over it is out of my hand, and uh, uh, I can have influenced the uh, possible purchase, but uh, uh, the rats uh, are in someone else's control at this time. I'm okay, sorry we've got that. time for about one more, one, one more question. Uh, yes, I'm not quite clear on the contact point and how much the PDF costs. Uh, say it again. I am not quite clear on the contact point and how much the PDF costs. Well, how to get a, a copy of Don's uh, PDF there? Um, the uh, oh, okay. There's a. Um, uh, let's see if we can uh, get put that up for you, Don. He wanted to know if he could get a copy of your PDF uh, and uh, the uh, uh, the website address there. Um, uh, if you look at my website, uh, you'll have uh, the whole st story there looking at you. Okay. Yeah. Th actually, most of his uh, uh, most of his common developments are on the website. Uh, on the bottom, you can uh, 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 down I might, here. Uh, I might tell you one thing. I get about a thousand emails a day from the ends of the earth in every language imaginable. Okay. And uh, you can imagine trying to sort through something like that and uh, what's important and what's not important and that sort of thing. So uh, uh, I'm covered in all, all countries and all languages all over the world. And uh, the website has been translated to, uh, into all these different languages. 
Okay, um, the website address, um, I, somebody said they were having a hard time seeing it up there. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge it. So, and uh, uh, Depending on how serious you are about it, I've got some uh, uh, calling cards over here I will have available for anyone who might want to take issue on uh, anything that I've said or done. Okay, there's a contact button here on the, on the bottom left. It's hard to see there. But uh, the web address, uh, and it's coming here right now, is www.altenergy-pro.com. Okay, and you'll find out if you go to Google information and try to look this up that out of a uh, million two hundred thousand uh, uh, people that have. Uh, have uh, devices and such related to uh, resident energy that one, two, and three slot belongs to me. And I didn't do that myself. It was uh, done by Google. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Don Smith. Thank you. Thank you.